we have a meeting for July 3rd in Rochester, New York. And um, it's in recognition of the observance of these United States of America, July 4th um, Independence Day. And um, Rochester is an important setting for us to address our topic there. And it's important for a number of reasons, not least of which is because of uh, the great person in the history of the African-American struggle for recognition, for human recognition, Frederick Douglass, that he also gave an address on that occasion, uh, on that uh, uh, July 4th, uh, and he was discussing the promises of democracy and the hypocrisy uh, in many of those promises with regard to the treatment of the American democracy of his people, our people, the African-American people. So um, Rochester is important setting for us to give that address, uh, but um, the brothers who are working there, uh, it would not be possible for us to even think about having such meeting without them and without the work that they have done. And uh, so uh, in my preparation for that meeting, I'm not just thinking about Frederick Douglass. I'm not just thinking about July 4th and Independence Day. I'm also thinking about uh, the brothers in Rochester and their support of Imam W. Muhammad's teaching and their uh, uh, commitment to provide a platform by which we can share Imam W.D. Muhammad's teaching to the whole world. And so when I thought about that situation and, and what uh, their intent is, and, the, and that's their intent in supporting me, they don't, they, they're not supporting me uh, because I say that I'm Imam W.D. Muhammad's successor. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, that had to be uh, proven to them. They're not that type. They're not, they're not the, the gullible type, you know, just accept anything somebody says. That had to be proven. That had to be shown for them to support it. And, and, and a couple of uh, those brothers, uh, they weren't necessarily interested in leading any particular effort in Rochester. Something compelling had to happen in order for them to get involved in leading an effort. And that compelling uh, interest was that they saw that here is a need that we register in our own soul. Here is a need that we register in this city that we live in. And here is a voice and language and understanding that addresses the need. And so let us work, commit ourselves, sacrifice to make a way for this message to be heard. And that's what they have done. So in my preparation for that meeting, I'm thinking of them and what they're committed to. And uh, so we have this topic, the burden of American freedom. And as I was, I'm not, I'm not necessarily going to 
address this or say this in that speech that I give next week, inshallah. Uh, but I wanted you all to know some of the things that influenced me as I prepare for these speeches and particularly this one. Uh, America is in a troubled state. And I don't know that its condition at this moment in history, uh, that if we look at American history, that there has been a time when, when it was more troubled than now. That includes civil war, world wars, social upheaval, et cetera. Uh, the American idea, the idea of representative government and respect for the natural integrity of the common person to support an enlightened progress in the context of society is being threatened. Who is situated, qualified, to address America's condition, not just address it for its, uh, its trouble, but also to give it or show it a better path or a um, improved path, who, is qualified to do that. Well, it would have to be a people that know America well, that are intimately acquainted with it and know its beauty and appreciate its beauty, but also know its areas of trouble and its ugliness and have been in some ways shaped by that as well and have come to balance these things and to uh, uh, value its longevity, its endurance, and value it to such a degree that they do not uh, see themselves or their identity except in the context of the movement for America to improve and to live up to its claims. Now, this is a special group special people.